Guys, I am so excited about this episode because if you've noticed from the last few one of these YouTube videos, I'm a big personal finance nerd and one of the shows I watch on a regular basis is The Money Guy. Now this show started off in 2006 as a podcast hosted by Brian Preston and he's The Money Guy. Since then, he's taken on a host, Bo Hansen, and their YouTube channel has collectively over 300,000 subscribers. It's continued to compound upon itself, just like they teach in their financial order of operations, which is kind of a blueprint for your money. Uh, it's sort of like Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps, except I think a lot better. Now, thanks to a little biography on the moneyguy.com website, I was able to learn enough about the main host to be able to research his family tree. So without further ado, let's get into researching the ancestry of Brian Preston, AKA the money guy. watch the money guy show you've probably noticed that the hosts have southern u.s accents and you might guess that's where brian preston's family comes from well on his patrilineal line that is the case but on his matrilineal line leads us to somewhere a little bit unexpected which we'll get to in a little bit but before we go to a deep dive into his family i have just one favor to ask which is that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already we're getting really close to 1,000 subscribers, more than 90% of the way there. So every subscribe helps us. And if you get a chance, also hit the like button and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new episode. So thank you so much for doing that, and let's begin. The biography mentions that Brian's father was a college football player at the University of Florida and that he had passed away. So this was the first avenue I went down. It didn't take long to find an obituary from 2000, which mentions the death of John Harvey Preston. And here we can find a mention of his children, siblings, and wife. But most importantly, it tells us that he was born in Columbus, Georgia, to parents named Peyton Miller Preston and Virgie McBride. Peyton was born into the dairy business, but later went on to work as a supervisor for a local newspaper. And luckily, the obituaries here are plentiful, because his allows us to go back an additional generation to his parents, Ernest Brady Preston and Rachel Etheridge. Ernest was a dairyman, born in Dale County, Alabama. His obituary lists his parents as Annie Miller and William Erskine Preston. However, other sources say that the middle name had been Eldridge, not Erskine. William was a farmer and Confederate veteran whose birth surname had shockingly not been Preston because the 1933 death certificate lists his parents as J.E. Matthews and Mary Preston. So for whatever reason, he had taken on his mother's maiden name. The J.E. was also incorrect as William's father was J.M., a.k.a. James M. Matthews. Here is his 1843 marriage to Mary J. Preston and an 1850 census, which shows the six-year-old William under his original surname. The Alabama Department of Archives and History keeps a collection of local family histories, and that collection seems to provide us further details tracing the Matthews line. It says James was the son of William Matthews, and William was the son of John Matthews, a Revolutionary War veteran. However, similar to the Bruce Springsteen episode I did, where it tried to link him back to a Revolutionary War veteran, I needed to take a bit of a deeper dive to determine if this was the case, and I actually took a look at the will of William Matthews, the man mentioned in the collection, and it didn't mention James at all as a child. So while it is possible that the details in the surname document are correct, I wasn't able to find anything backing it up and it seemed a little bit suspicious to me that the son who was still alive at the time would not be mentioned in this will. 
So therefore, the furthest back that I feel confident in saying Brian Preston is descended from is his third great-grandfather, James Matthews. So now you know about his paternal side. We're about to move to his matrilineal side, who descended from some neighbors up north. And when I say north, I mean really north. From a marriage announcement, we know that Brian's mother's maiden name is Pamela Gay Beck, and that at least at that time, she worked for the Clayton County Board of Education. It gives her father's name as Walter Calvin Beck, who further digging showed was married to a woman named Eloise. She was Mary Eloise Perkins, a woman from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and she had first married a man named Robert Blizzard, but after separating, she got together with Walter Beck, and they had Pamela soon thereafter. Thankfully, her 1922 birth record from Cambridge is available online, and it shows her parents to have been named Clifford T. Perkins and Elsie T. Pinkham. Elsie tragically committed suicide in 1943 and was found by her two daughters. And this must have been a traumatic and horrifying experience for Eloise, who was only 20 years old at the time. But moving on from this terrible tragedy, we actually get to something a little more complicated and mysterious, because it's a little bit difficult to figure out who the parents of Elsie were. You see, her marriage to Clifford Perkins shows her parents to have been named Ira Pinkham and Francis Lunt. But if we take a look at the 1910 U.S. federal census, it shows that Elsie was adopted. She is not living with them in the 1900 census, so it can be presumed that the adoption took place sometime between 1900 and 1910. But without online adoption records, what possible hope could there be to take the matrilineal line back further? Well, thankfully, there is a second obituary that mentions she had a sister who was married to a man named Grover Bradford. And I was able to trace this sister, who was Linny Estelle Ray, also adopted, but by a different family. And luckily, Linny's marriage certificate actually lists the true birth name of her parents, who were Edward Carter and Teresa Lunt. If the surname Lunt looks familiar, it's because it was also the surname of Elsie's adopted mother, Frances. You see, she and Teresa were sisters. Elsie was actually born Teresa Carter in 1893 in Brewer, Maine. Teresa's mother, aka Teresa Lunt, died two years later in 1895, shortly after the birth of a son, Joseph. She most likely died from complications of childbirth since the death certificate lists heart failure from hemorrhaging, and this was just 11 days after Joseph was born. Teresa Lunt shows up in the 1870 census next to her half-siblings on her father's side, Fanny and Charles, as well as another half-sister on her mother's side, Mary Ellis. You see, her mother, Catherine, had been married to a man named Thomas Ellis before marrying her father, Joseph Lunt. Sounds confusing? Well, there's more. Catherine died in 1917, and her death certificate gives a few key pieces of information. First of all, her full maiden name was Catherine Ann Seitman, and she hailed from a town called Ship Harbor in Nova Scotia, Canada. The document gives her parents' names as Andrew J. Seitman and Olive Parker. Her obituary tells us she was a member of the Church of England and that she was, quote, a woman of excellent character, fine disposition, and a good Christian woman. On Roots Web, I was able to find a book of Ship Harbor families, which mentions Andrew Seitman and Olivia Melissa Parker. And she was the daughter of Phineas Parker and Catherine Frazier. Catherine was the daughter of Alexander Frazier and Alice McGregor. And it's there that the trail finally runs cold. If these collected details are to be believed, then Alice McGregor was the sixth great grandmother on Brian Preston, the money guy's matrilineal side. Sixth great 
grandmother. Now that's a lot of grandmothers. So anyways, I was not expecting the maternal side to be traced to Canada, but that is where the family comes from. The patrilineal side comes from the South in the United States. The matrilineal side can be traced as far back as Canada. Give it enough generations and soon you'll reach the boiling point of genealogy where people will be talking about you on YouTube. And with just a little bit of migration yesterday, you can have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Genealogy, out.